This is just a quick uh, solder tutorial before you guys get started on your boards. Uh, just a quick note before I forget, um, when you guys are working on your boards, you should do your best to avoid uh, filling the first two and the last two uh, squares. You guys are going to have a project at the end of the semester and you will appreciate having space on the ends of your boards. Um, you should be able to get the whole project done uh, on the middle squares. Um, so today I'm going to be soldering a copy of this board. I need a new one um, with a couple different uh, values, resistor and capacitor values. Notice some best practices. Uh, the whole board is oriented left to right, uh, top to bottom. Uh, it's not necessarily the most efficient way, space-wise, to do it. Uh, for example, it might be, depending on what each of these pins are, it might be more efficient to flip it around, but it makes it very easy to read the board. Also, all of the resistors start left to right, top to down. Um, nothing is really sticking up uh, off the board vertically. Everything is uh, trimmed flush, so these wires were all um, pushed all the way in, so there are no like big jumpers, um, and then stuff is labeled, and everything is as straight and clean as possible. Um, so I'm going to be copying this board on a new board. Uh, I'm going to just be showing you guys real quick a couple of uh, best practices, things that are smart to do, and generally how to solder, because most of you have never soldered before. Um, a couple things that are useful to have on hand. Um, gloves, because uh, flux is sticky. Flux, um, which we'll talk about. Uh, desolder braid, solder wick, whatever you want to call it. It's this uh, braided copper wire coated in flux. Um, some solder, uh, preferably that has a ro uh, rosin core. I don't know if you can read that. Um, that's a type of flux. Um, some tweezers can help with small parts. Um, pliers can help with bending wires so that you can get really sharp angles and really uh, clean, a really clean board. And then some cutters to trim those angles. Um, a box of jumper wires of different lengths helps keep everything really clean. Um, and then obviously a solder iron and some parts. Um, this one's not on. Um, you can find different tips for solder irons. Um, in general, you guys don't need to worry about having a super small tip, but... Um, um, so the first thing is generally how to solder things. Um, so solder normally comes uh, with a little bit of flux already on it, um, already inside the solder. So if you see when I touch the solder iron to it, it will um, it will ball up and it will, it looks like it flows like a liquid pretty well. Um, and then if you see, as I continue to heat it up and I burn off the flux, you can see that it starts to behave a little bit less like a liquid. Uh, so this is just the solder as it is without anything added to it. And it's kind of tacky and sticky and it doesn't behave as nice as when it has flux. Um, so if you get solder stuck to the end of uh, your soldering iron, you can um, scrape it off. We have foil. Uh, you guys will have little sponges. Um, so um, let me get a parting and instrument tape amplifier. Um, so they come in packages like this. Uh, you guys will already have yours divided out uh, for you. Um, so this is an AD623 instrumentation amplifier. Um, and what you're looking at when you look at this is uh, a package. So if you Google AD623AN, and uh, you really should only need AD623, um, the rest of the numbers and these other numbers down here don't really matter as much. Um, if you Google that, you'll find a data sheet, and the data sheet will show you the diagram of what's actually inside this instrumentation amplifier, like the op-amp diagram, um, 
how it works, like what voltages you should put in, um, how fast of a signal it can process, uh, what's the gain on it, and stuff like that. So when you look at this, this is the package for the op amp and everything that's inside of it. So when you look at a package like this, you can find um, a um, identifying mark. Normally it's a circle over here, or this is a half circle, sometimes it's a little circle in the bottom left. Um, but you use that uh, mark to identify where the first pin is, because if you just look at this as is, and if you know the text gets scraped off and you don't have this mark, you don't really know which of these pins is the starting pin. Um, so from the diagram, I know that because this half circle is on the left, that means this pin right here is pin number one. And then the pins go um, counterclockwise. So this is pin one, this is pin two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And if you look at the data sheet, so if you Google 8623 data sheet, it will tell you what each of these pins are. So for example, I know that pin one and pin eight are the two uh, pins that will set the gain. So you can put a resistor in between pin one and pin eight and that will change the gain from a gain of one to a gain of a thousand or however high the gain can go for that particular instrumentation amplifier. Um, in general, like most, uh, implement, most instrumentation amplifiers will have a similar pin layout, but just to be sure you should always double check the data sheet. So I know from laying out this board the last time that I want to start this pin in the fourth. I want to leave a little bit of space. So I want to start this circuit um, in the fourth line. And sometimes because the way these are angled, they don't want to slide in perfectly. So you can just kind of bend them. Um, I should probably show the circuit that I'm actually built. I am making a new filter between an iridium oxide and silver chloride sensor. I know that the voltages are going to range between 710 and negative 150 millivolts. I'm passing that into the 8623AN. I'm using that uh, resistor as the gain setting resistor. I'm going to input 5 and negative 5 volts. It's going to have a ground as a reference. Uh, this is a low pass filter. Um, with specific values, and then it's going to be a simple op amp uh, with plus 5 volts and ground, and then a simple voltage divider, which we are going to pass into an ADC. Um, you don't need to know any of that. That's just the circuit I'm building. And I'm building two of them on one board. So that's, and that's to um, process a new type of pH sensor um, that I'm working on. Um, so I've got this set in, but um, it's not really a good idea to try to solder into these holes from the top. Uh, it's just more difficult, and I don't like it as much. Uh, and if you flip the board over, it just falls right out. Well, it can fall right out. Or it will sit like at an angle so that this part is a bit more out of place than this. So it's kind of loose and flopping around. Uh, so what I will do is I will get just a piece of painter's tape, um, and I will tape it down so that it stays put and then now I've got all these pins pointing up uh, and I can solder. It's a good idea to keep all of your soldering on one side of the board if you can. Um, for example if I wanted to I could solder from here to here and solder underneath this um, IC, uh, the instrumentation amplifier. Um, but it, it, it's easier to read a board if everything is on one side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add flux. Flux isn't strictly necessary if your solder already has flux in it, but what flux is, is it's a liquid that helps solder flow. So if you remember um, when I was messing around with the solder, at the beginning it acted more like a liquid and it flowed really well. But um, after all the flux had burned off, it behaved uh, a bit more squishy like a solid. Um, so this is just, um, a pen that acts like a Tide pen if you've ever used one, and it leaves a little bit of flux, and I'm not going to flux these two because I want to show you what happens. Um, so this will just help 
the solder flow very easily and it'll fill the hole. Um, oh yeah, by the way, these are all copper plated holes. They are copper on both sides and they're copper all the way through. Solder likes to stick to copper very well. Um, and if you can see these little lighter red areas show that this entire row is shorted together. So anything I pin here, anything I pin at the in this pin of this row is also connected to every other pin in this row. And that's what allows you to make electrical connections. But um, for example, this pin and this pin are not connected because there's no little red line between them. Um, and if you scoot over, you can see these rails off to the sides. So for example, you might wanna make this a power supply in this one your ground because that's a very common thing that you need a lot of components have access to so you can just jump from one of your power rails over here I don't know if you guys breadboarded before or not but in general it's a good idea to breadboard and figure out how you want to lay out your circuit and everything's gonna work before you solder it the, the goal behind soldering is that everything stays in place and it's much more reliable um, so to solder I'm just going to stick the iron so that it is in contact with both the component and the copper, and I'm going to just move in the solder until it's uh, touching both. Ah, this is hard to do looking at a screen. Oh, by the way, my solder is set to 750 degrees. Um, so you can see there how easily the solder flowed. It looked a lot like water, um, and it just filled the hole very easily. Um, and that's how it's gonna go really whenever you use um, a lot of flux. So uh, one tip is it's kind of hard to use too much solder, but it's uh, kind of easy to use too little. Another thing that you can see I'm doing is after I take the solder away, I will just leave the iron on there for a little bit longer just to let everything settle into place and that helps it make a really good solid connection. Um, so I'm going to finish these two and then I'm going to show you what happens uh, when you don't use flux or if you try to re-solder things. So for example, if you remelt solder too many times, um, you'll burn off the flux and it won't behave smoothly. So what can happen is, what happened the first time I did this, is I'm just going to burn some off. Come on. Okay, so I burned off, and I'm just going to move it around. I'm doing this on paper, by the way. Never do this on a real countertop. Um, until I burn off all of the flux and get it behaving poorly. Um, so that's nice and gross and terrible. Um, so now, if I try to put this into the hole, it doesn't work at all. It sucks, and it, can you guys see that? I can't tell if it's focusing on the camera. But you can see how it didn't fill the hole immediately. It's, um, this might be a better angle. You can see that while the rest of these, it formed a nice uh, little pool and fell all the way into the hole. This one is just kind of craggly and a mess and there's gaps. So this is not a strong electrical connection at all. And even when I reflow it, nothing good happens. So that's a terrible connection and that might be a good reason why a board's not working. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the flux pen and I'm going to hit it with a bunch of flux. Um, again, you don't need to do this if you don't burn off all the flux first. And I'm just going to reheat it again and you'll see that it flows really well and it immediately falls into the hole. And I'm going to add, I'm going to add more because there's, I didn't use enough. Solder. Does this help? Uh, I don't know if that helped or not. Yeah, we're gonna go with it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more solder because this joint kind of sucks. Um, this one could use a little bit more too. This is really hard to do watching a screen. Trust me, it's much easier when you're actually looking at it. And I'm doing this under a microscope with video, but you don't need to use a microscope. Um, and one thing about flux, so flux is very sticky and kind of annoying. If you get acetone or alcohol, um, it will rub right off. Um, so now I can peel this off. And 
And uh, for most of these, you can see that the solder came up and formed a nice little bridge. Um, so that's a super good connection. Um, but even here where it didn't and here where it, where it didn't, if we look on the other side, that's uh, this pin and this pin, you can see that it's still made pretty good connections. So I'm not worried about it. Um, it is kind of hard to hold the solder. If you hold the solder there too long, you can destroy parts. I've never done it. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, so that's what you do if everything goes great. So now if you mess something up, so let's say I want to, this is the resistor. If Say I wanted to put the resistor in between this pin and this pin, but I accidentally soldered it in to this pin. And I get some flux. And I solder it in very well, nice and tight. There is a way to undo this mess. Um, there are two ways. There is a solder air gun, in, uh, which we don't use. They're not great. Um, they kind of suck. But the idea behind those is it's uh, a pump that you prime, and then you melt the solder, and then you hold the pump right next to the solder, and you let go, and it creates a blast of suction of air. And the idea is that it's uh, it's fast enough that it will suck up the solder while it's still hot and will clean out your hole for you. The holes are called vias, by the way, VIA. Um, but that's not always, th that doesn't work very well. So what we like to use is um, desolder braid, solder wick, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a braided copper wire that, uh, I just burned the microscope. Oh well, um, they're not that that expensive. Um, so to get the solder to unstick from the copper and the steel, you need it to you you need copper because uh, solder will stick to different metals preferentially. It doesn't stick to steel nearly as well as it sticks to copper or in my experience, antimony. It sticks to antimony very, very well. Um, so the solder wick lets you uh, pull it up. So if you can see, it's kind of hard to tell with, with the colors, um, but parts of this wick have already been used and have solder on them. Um, I find it's easiest to just cut those off and always start with a fresh bit of uh, solder wick. Solder wick is kind of expensive, but um, it's really the only way to save a component. Um, so what you want to do is you want to find the hole that you messed up on and coat it with flux. It's more important to use flux here because you've already heated up the solder once, so you've already burned off some of the flux. Then you want to take your solder wick and your solder iron, just push the solder wick on top of it and using the solder iron, push it in to the wick and the solder and don't hold the wick while this is happening because the wick will get very hot and as you can sort of see the solder wick is pulling up all the solder um, just keep going um, until you see it stop moving up the wick or until you're afraid that you're going to overheat your component and then when you're done start putting pressure on the wick so that as soon as you lift the iron the wick pulls away if you lift the iron before you lift the wick, the wick will, um, the solder will solidify and the wick will stick to the hole. Um, now I got kind of lucky and it looks like that worked pretty well on the first try. Um, it's still stuck in there. I really can't focus this to save my life. Um, it's still stuck in there, but I can see through the hole, which is really good. So once you can see, so you may have to um, cut off the saw, like cut off the used wick and do this a couple times to get up all the solder. But as soon as you can see through the hole, you're almost there. 
Then, then what you need to do is you just need to take the solder iron, put it on the opposite side from where you can see through, and push towards where there's an empty space. And what that'll do is it'll melt the solder just around the component. You can also be pulling out the component and pulling on the component as I'm doing this, um, if the component doesn't get too hot. Um, but you can just sort of push it away so that it will come through or detach from the wall. Um, I may not have done this well enough. Um, okay, components out and saved. And you can reuse this. Um, so as you can see there, uh, I'll zoom in. I need to not adjust the microscope with the solder iron in my hand. You can see that some of the copper started to pull away. So this is not good, but it's not the end of the world. So that little bit of there, that's now basically useless copper. Um, I don't want to pull on, oh, okay, broke off. So that's fine. I mean, there's still copper plated all through the hole. Um, and copper all the way around the outside. And worst case scenario, if you really, really need to use this hole and you completely destroyed it, you can flip it around on the other side and use the other side as well. Um, but that's how you get a component out. Um, now just for a last thing, I'm going to show you how to um, get a, a component really cleanly. Um, so this is a 16, 17K resistor. I know that because I measured it because I actually, I need to know the uh, value very accurately. Um, they all have color codes. Um, don't bot just, it's 2018, get an app. I, my phone has an app where you just put it in and it tells you what it is. Um, don't, don't memorize this. Um, capacitors have their own system. Uh, it's slightly more difficult. Uh, I find it best to just keep them in the package that you bought them in, um, and it will tell you 10 microfarad. So, but it will also say 1006 or 106, um, 106, and that's uh, how many powers away it is from, I believe, picofarads. So I believe, uh, actually, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything about that because I just keep them in the bags that they came in. So I'm going to put this resistor between pin one and pin eight, but I want to keep it flush to the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this space here. And I'm going to bend the wires so that the whole board is as flush and flat as possible. And I'm going to orient it top to bottom. Um, you read it, the colors uh, starting farthest away from the gold or silver band. Um, so this is brown, blue, orange. So I'm gonna put the brown oriented towards the top of the board. And you know where like the bottom and the left of the board are because it starts A and one. So if you wanna be super precise about it, uh, you can just sort of take your tweezers and just sort of scratch where you wanna make bends because the metal's really soft. And then take, oh, how is this gonna work? Take some pliers and bend, and because I've done this before, I know that I want to bend down. So I made a nice angled piece there. I'm going to do the same on the other side, of course, making sure that I'm actually, I'm not, I mean, not do this under the microscope. I'm making sure that I'm bending them in the same direction. And then the second bend. It's so much easier not under a microscope. Um, so then I pull up the part. I know I want it to go there and there. Backwards. There and there. And I push it down until it is flush with the board. And let me focus up. I'm, I have to hold the board up right now because uh, these are sticking out the end. So one thing you can do if you're doing a lot of components, you can fold these down um, and that will let you sort of keep placing components on the board. Um, so you don't have to like keep flipping. If you really know your stuff, you can just sort of lay out your board and keep taping things and then 
once everything's taped in place, just turn it over and solder everything at once. I would not recommend that for your first board, um, but it's a way to make a, a, a whole board very quickly. Um, so it's in the right place, it's nice and flush, uh, the angles are tight, so I'm going to just get another uh, little piece of tape. And it doesn't need to be as tight as possible, but it just sort of helps. And I'm going to uh, flux and solder. You can see as I'm pushing it, um, it's moving a little bit, but it's fine. Um, so I'm going to solder these in. You can see how it kind of sunk a little bit more. That's why I keep the um, the iron there, and then that helps it keep make a nice uh, little mound of solder on the other side as well, not just on this side. That's how you know that you have like a, a really good connection. Um, so those are both good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, slide them up as much as possible, and cut down nice and close. Uh, this may not be a great idea, so you guys have a limited number of parts, and um, let's say you put a resistor here between these two points, but it turns out that after the fact, you need actually need to make this resistor go, instead of this point on pin number eight, it actually needs to reach all the way over, not even on this component, let's say over here. Um, you can't use this resistor. There's no way you're gonna get this resistor from this point to this point when it's at the length that it is right now. So it might be a good idea for you guys to not cut it totally flush, maybe leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room, and maybe don't bend it so that it's perfectly straight and flush on the board. Your first board doesn't need to be, you know, beautiful. Maybe you have it sticking up a little bit so that you have some wiggle room in the future. I mean, there are ways around it. You could solder it to like a jumper wire and use that as an extension, but that's not ideal. So maybe don't be as clean as possible the first time. Uh, but I will say a word of warning is if you leave these too long, they can end up touching other things on the bottom of the board because the bottom of the board is still conductive. So if I left this trace on and ended up touching this pin right here, you would get really weird bad results. So that's a quick side tutorial. I'm not going to finish this board because it's late and I'm tired. Um, but I think that covers all of the basics of how to get started on your board.